Hi, this is Leonard from Cosmic Sound, and today we're going to be doing something a little bit different. We're going to show you how to set up and uh, make your first recording with your new audio interface. Um, let's get straight into it. The one we're actually going to be showing you is the PreSonus Audio Box. It comes in this really great pack, which actually gives you a microphone, a set of headphones, and all the cables you're going to need to get going. So uh, first thing we're going to do is unbox it, and we're going to see what you get inside. So first thing we've got in here is our microphone. So this is a large diaphragm condenser microphone, so it's perfect for recording vocals or anything really. So that's going to be a component we're going to come to a little bit later. Uh, next thing up, we've got all our cables. So we've got a microphone cable here, which is XLR connection on both ends. That's ready to be connected from the microphone to the interface. We have a USB cable here, which we're going to use to connect the audio interface to the computer. And finally, our set of headphones, which we will use in the recording process. So next thing is the audio interface itself. So this is the, uh, the PreSonus Audio Box USB interface. Um, it's one of the more basic ones in the range, but it's perfect for what we're going to be doing today, which is just recording a single track of either vocal or instrument. Um, just to run you through a few of the features on the audio box, the first thing you'll notice is the most prominent feature, which is the two inputs we have on the front. Now these are a combo input, so we can either use an XLR connection for a microphone or we could use a quarter inch jack if we wanted to connect a guitar or other instrument like a synth to it. Um, we have a whole bunch of knobs on the front here and these control the input level of, the, uh, of these inputs, um, as well as we have a knob to mix between what we're, what we're actually inputting and the playback, which we'll show you a bit later on as well. Um, we've got a headphone volume knob, which is for when we connect a set of headphones to the interface. And of course, our main volume level for uh, the speakers that might be connected to the interface. On the back, we've just got um, a few more connections on here. First of all, a USB connection, which we're going to use to connect this to the computer. We've got MIDI in and out, which we won't be using today, but that would be uh, useful if you were wanting to use an external MIDI device, like a keyboard or possibly a, a synth module. Finally, we've got uh, a couple of pairs of outputs here. So firstly, we've got the main outputs here, so left and right, which we connect to a um, set of studio monitors. And finally, the phone's output, which we would connect uh, simply to a set of headphones. So let's get into setting this all up. So the installation process will differ a fair bit from machine to machine, um, particularly between the Windows platform and the Mac OS X platform. Um, you will notice the first thing we've got with uh, with our device is a, a driver's disk. So if you're on the Windows platform, you'll need to install these drivers before you can do anything else. Um, the, the, the device itself won't work without the driver installed, so it's very important to do this before you do anything else. You will even find sometimes with Windows, if you plug the device in before you've installed the driver, you may actually ruin the installation and it might not work at all. So very important to, before you connect anything to the computer, uh, put the disk in and install anything that's relevant. Now, with the Mac OS X platform, there's a couple of uh, differences and variances in how this process works. Sometimes you'll have a driver that needs to be installed, and some devices are what we call class compliant, which this one is, which means we just plug it in and it works straight out of the box. We don't have to install any extra software for that to happen. So again, um, it's always safest to put the disk in first and see what's on there. Uh, if you need to install the driver, do so. Otherwise, just plug it in and off we'll go. So the next thing we'll need to install is some recording software. So the one we get with this particular brand uh, of interface is PreSonus's own software, Studio One. Um, and this one comes with um, the Artist version, um, which is a pretty fully fledged um, version of the software and gives you everything you're going to need to get a recording happening. So the process for installing the software, there's a couple of ways you can do this. Uh, the first thing you could do would be just put the disk in and install it directly from the disk and then check online if there are any updates. Or most often now with most of these different software packages, you can jump online, find the latest version and just download it, which is going to guarantee that you've got the absolute latest version of your software. So that's what I'm going to do now. So first thing we're going to do is open a browser and I am going to Google PreSonus. And another point to note as well at this point is that um, if, you, if you wanted to get download the latest version of your drivers rather than installing them from disk, that would be a really good idea as well. So you'd be able to check on this website and find all your extra drivers as well. Um, we're going to jump into products and then down the bottom here we'll find Studio One, which is the software that we want to install. 
And where it says here, download free demo, that is actually the full version of the software. It just means it's an unregistered version. So this is what we want to grab. And because I'm on Mac, I'll grab the Mac version here. You'll also notice there are two different Windows versions. Uh, it's very important as well to know whether your operating system is 32-bit or 64-bit if you're on a Windows machine because there's actually two different versions of the software. So you'll need to find the right one for you. So now I'm going to install the software. Now I've got it downloaded. I'm going to jump into Downloads here and have a look. And there it is, PreSonus Studio 1, ready to go. Let's have a look. So it's now opening it up. And there it is. So the process uh, on a PC is a little bit different. Um, you'd have an installer ask you where you want to install it to, and you'd go through the process of answering a couple of questions and then go through the installation. On the Mac platform, what we need to do is pick up this icon here for Studio One and drop it into the Applications folder. So I'm going to do that now. And it's now copying across to the Applications folder. And that's now ready to go. We've installed. So there's a couple of ways we could find it. We could um, jump down into our dock and go to Finder, or we could go to Applications and find it. Um, I find the quickest workaround for finding programs is to use what we call Spotlight. So that's Command and Spacebar. And I'm just going to type the beginning of the program in there, and you'll see it pop up there, Studio One. Uh, on a PC, uh, you would go into your Start menu, find the program in the list, and then open it from there. So we're going to get a few things that pop up here. We've got a user license agreement here. So um, the, the appropriate thing to do is to read that whole thing if you can be bothered and then hit accept at the end. And now what we've got are a few options for activation of the product. Now different software packages will work completely differently from program to program. So it's all different, depends what software you're using. Some of them you might just have to enter um, a, a license code. Some of them you may have to uh, download things from the internet. So like with Pro Tools, you might have to have an iLock account, for example, and an, and an Avid account. Um, with Ableton, you need to create a, uh, an Ableton account online and then it'll register the serial number to your user account. So I'm just going to use the demo version here so I don't have to install it. But what you would you'd normally do here is go to activate and then you'd um, enter the CD code that comes with the, with the CD and then off you go. So here we are, we're ready to go now and we're up to the start screen. Um, Studio One's a bit different to a lot of the other programs. You can actually enter an artist profile and a whole bunch of information about yourself if you want to do that. Um, I'm just going to jump into creating a new song like that. So we got some templates here we can choose. So this is for pretty much the different hardware in the PreSonus range. So if you had a particular piece of hardware, it'll set it up all the ins and outs for you. So let's just create an empty song and we're going to start from scratch. And there it is. So the first thing we're going to want to do to get into this is create a new audio track. So I can do that by right clicking here and we're going to go add audio track mono. So we've got a few choices here. So the big question is which one did you want to pick? Well, if you're going to record from a microphone or if you wanted to plug a guitar into there, it's going to be a mono input. So you want to select mono. The only reason you'd want to select stereo is if you're connecting a stereo device to it. So that might be if you had, uh, say you wanted to record something from a CD and you were jacking that in there, you could do that. If you were recording from a synthesizer that was stereo, then you'd jack that in the stereo. So the big, the big thing to remember is if you've only got one thing plugged in, uh, make sure it's mono. If you have both things plugged in, then it's going to be stereo. So we're going to create a mono track. And that's now pretty much ready to record with. So the next thing we're going to do once we've got the software installed is actually connect the device to the computer. So here's the USB cable that came with it. And it's pretty hard to get this bit wrong. The two ends of the USB cable are completely different. So there's one end which is distinctly to plug into the interface and then one end which is for the computer. So the first thing we're going to do is connect this to the audio interface. So there's a port on this side. We'll jack that in there. You want to make sure it's pushed in all the way as well, but don't jam it in there. So just make sure it's nice and tight and not going to come out. And then I'm going to connect this to the computer. Now most computers will have um, USB ports on the computer themselves, as does the one that we're using. But for ease, I'm going to plug this into the monitor. Uh, this actually has USB ports on there as well. So you'll now notice that the power light is on. And this is what's called a bus powered device. 
which means that it actually obtains its power from the computer as well as transferring data between the two devices. So we have a power light on, which means this is ready to go. Um, another way of checking, if, especially if you're on the Mac platform, you can do this on Windows as well. If you want to make sure that the device is connected, it's really easy to go into your preferences, jump into sound, and we'll have a look at the output. And we should be able to see there we've got audio box USB. So we know that this device is installed and ready and working with the computer. So the next thing we're going to do is set up the microphone. I'm going to show you uh, what I would consider to be the right way to do this. Um, and the reason that I'm going to show you this way is so that you don't damage any of your hardware. It's very easy to drop your microphone or do something you know stupid to it, which you don't want to do with your new, brand new hardware. So the first thing we're going to do is get a nice solid microphone stand. Um, this is ready to go. So what we're going to do is get, first of all, this is the microphone and you'll see it's actually got the actual connection to the microphone stand already attached to it. Some of these will come in a shock mount, so you want to attach the shock mount to the stand first and then attach the microphone. I'm going to do something similar with this as well so that we don't damage the microphone. So first of all, I'm going to remove the microphone clip from the microphone and attach that to the stand itself. All right, so you'll notice when I go to attach this that it doesn't fit and it's a common problem and the reason is because there's actually a nut inside here which is for a different sized microphone stand um, attachment. So the easiest way to get this thing out is with a five cent coin. And there's a slot in there which I can insert a coin into and I just twist. And there it is, it comes right out. Make sure you keep this somewhere safe as well because it's, um, you probably can't come up against a microphone at some point that you're gonna need this for. So next thing, let's screw this onto the microphone stand. And there it is. Now next stage, I'm gonna put the microphone into it. Make sure that's in nice and tight. And then I have this nut at the bottom which I can then uh, affix to the stand. So that's now really secure. So the microphone can't fall off the stand no matter what I do. Um, the next thing we're going to do is connect the cable to it. So another really great thing about uh, this particular package is that it comes with a cable and often when you buy a microphone you won't get a cable with it. So to connect the cable the first thing you want to do is connect to the audio interface uh, itself. And this means, the reason we do this is if we were to connect this cable to the microphone first and then walk towards the interface, we might actually pull this over. So always connect the end to your interface first. So we'll plug that in there. So I'm plugging into input number one, which is the most logical one to plug into. You technically could plug it into the second one. It doesn't really make a difference. It's just a different setup in the, in the uh, software when you get to that. So the other end here, this is the female end, is gonna go into the microphone onto the underside of it. So um, a couple of tips with this as well, make sure your cable's not tied up in knots. And this is all just safety precautions as well. Um, if the cable has extra length, you can wind it around the stand if you wanna actually take the slack out of it, um, just to make sure you don't trip over it. So that's just a couple of extra tips. And we're gonna now connect this end to the microphone. So. All I'm going to do is find the way that it goes in. It'll only go in one way and we'll click it in there. So that's now locked in. If you wanted to remove the cable, just make sure you press the button in first. There's actually a little button on here and this will just prevent it from, uh, from locking. So we'll plug that back in. That's now ready to record. We've got one end in the interface, one end in the microphone. We're ready to go. So now, um, as I mentioned before, I could have just chosen a template. Uh, to get this set up properly, but we're going to do this manually. So this is quite commonly what you have to do with software anyway. All right, so let's get in here. So we've got a drop down here, which would normally have all of our inputs. But if I drop that down, all I've got is something which is audio IO setup. And this is IO stands for in out. Um, we'll jump in here and let's have a look. So the first thing you'll notice here is this is looking a bit strange. If we go to the outputs, we've got a pair of outputs here. If we go to the inputs, we've got absolutely nothing to work with. And the reason uh, this is a problem is because we're still using the internal sound card. So it's very important in your software to make sure that your external sound card is the one you've got selected. So we're gonna jump into the options here. Um, we're in audio setup and you'll see here audio device is showing up as built-in output and this is wrong. So if we drop this down, we get a whole list of devices that are connected to the computer. And there you can see audio box USB, which matches the name on the device. So that's the one we want to choose. 
All right, there we go. So that's now changed over. If I now jump back to where I was before, you'll see we've changed over to audio box and I've now got two inputs here. If I jump to outputs, I've still got my stereo pair of outputs, which is exactly what we want. So we're gonna say, okay. So now what you'll see is when I drop down this little menu here, I've now got two options. I've got left and right, which correspond to the left and right inputs uh, on the interface, or they're called one and two on the interface. So for this first one here, I'm gonna select left. So now what this means is that the software, this particular channel in the software is receiving a signal coming from the microphone into uh, the first channel on this interface. So one other very important thing here, because I'm using a condenser microphone, is I need to turn on phantom power. So you'll see there's a button here that says 48 volts, and that is what we need to press. If you're using a dynamic microphone like a Shure SM58, you wouldn't need to do this, but for these type of microphones, we do. So we'll press that button there. We now have phantom power on, so we should be receiving signal from this microphone. If I arm the track to record, I can now see that I've got signal coming into the microphone and we're pretty much now ready to record. So position the microphone uh, pretty much where you're gonna to wanna to be in front of it. And we've got two knobs here. We've got one for uh, channel one and one for the second input. And we're going to use this to set the level for this microphone. So you'll see uh, right now when I'm talking into the microphone, we're not even getting half uh, level on here. So we're gonna to wanna to crank that quite a bit more. Um, it's really important that you don't redline here though, so make sure that your signal's never hitting the top of that bar, but we wanna be getting some decent level into it. So that's pretty good right there. It means that you can uh, yell a little bit if you want to, but you're actually not gonna have too low level of recording as well. We wanna find a happy medium. So a couple of other really important things before we get going. If you're gonna record a vocal, we're going to want to use a pop filter, which I've got here, so pretty easy to work these things. We just fix it onto the stand and then we place it in front of the microphone like this. And this will just stop really harsh uh, sounding P and S sounds getting through and also the wind from your breath um, actually affecting the microphone. The only other thing you'd want to do is uh, give your instrumentalist or vocalist a set of headphones. So we have a set of headphones that come bundled with this kit. And all I'm gonna do now is connect uh, this set of headphones to the back of the audio interface. So we've got headphones in there. We'll just jack that in. We're now ready to go. Now I mentioned it pretty much at the beginning of the video that we have a knob here that can actually mix between the incoming signal and the software. So if you're wanting to monitor back just what your, uh, what's coming in through the microphone, you would just want to turn that to inputs. So now we've got the headphones connected, I'll find that if I put them on, I can actually uh, hear back uh, what's going into the microphone. So if we had other music that we wanted to play back as well, um, we could, that's when we actually use this knob here to actually mix between the level coming from the computer and the level coming from the input. So we're pretty much ready to get a recording going now. So all I'm gonna do is hit record and you will see coming through uh, that we're now getting a recording of my voice as it goes in. We're actually getting a pretty decent level of signal. And now I'm just gonna hit stop. And I can very easily drop, jump back to the beginning of the track now. We'll see I started recording from a strange place, so it's really easy to pick up the audio, move it back to the beginning. And there it is, we have a recording. So there you have it, a very simple recording. We've showed you a few things here. So first of all, how to install your audio interface, which means installing the drivers if you're on a PC or sometimes on a Mac, installing your recording software. Um, we've also looked at how to set up your microphone. So attaching your microphone to a stand, attaching the cable to the microphone and to the audio interface. And then we've just gone through very briefly how to get an actual recording happening into your software. Now we carry a whole range of these sort of products in uh, both of our stores at Osborne Park in Cannington. Um, the one we've looked at today is the uh, Audio Box Studio by PreSonus. But um, for more information, please give us a call or come in and see us. Um, or you can check out any of these products online at cosmic.com.au.